base adjustments of KE fuel distributors. Once in a while on this channel, I will put out material that's probably for about one to two percent of our subscribers. And the reason I do this is because I realize nobody's going to get this material anywhere else. And I think it's more efficient to make a video than answering a question for one person. So today we're going to talk about the base nut on these KE fuel distributors. And again, this doesn't apply to KE Jetronic, to, to K Jetronic with a warm up regulator. It only applies to KE Jetronic cars with an EHA or electro hydraulic actuator. So in my hand, I have the 018 fuel distributor from a, from a uh, 560 SL. And this fuel distributor was also used in 420s, it was also used on 500 SLs. Um, but this adjustment applies even to the 190 or the 300E. And on the bottom of the fuel distributor, you have a slotted nut. And so many of you wouldn't even notice this nut if I didn't point it out, but we're gonna talk about this nut, what it does, when it should be adjusted and why it should be uh, adjusted to make your Mercedes run like it's supposed to. So top side, without even removing the fuel distributor, let's say you have a Mercedes doesn't start that well, but once it runs, it's running okay. It may have some sluggish performance issues. It may have some, some difficult, most of the time it's difficulty starting, but you also might have some black smoke. You also may have, um, if you're looking at that potentiometer on the side of the airflow meter, you may have some weird readings that are well above the 0.3 volt difference between, I think it's pin one and three. Although I could be wrong, but what what you'll see, what you'll see most of the time, the ultimate symptom sy symptom is that when your airflow meter is adjusted and the car is running smooth, you have no free play in the airflow meter plate after you shut the engine off. Now the airflow meter plate is that big circular disc that is right in the middle of the throat of your air cleaner, and on a normal running KE Jetronic car, again not a K Jet car, KE Jetronic only you should have between one and three millimeters of play. But really the number is, the, the number you wanna hit is like two to three millimeters. If you're hitting one millimeter, like there's just barely free play, then it means that this nut probably still needs to be adjusted. But the worst case scenario is that you have no free play. And that's what I'm most concerned about here cars that have no free play at all because what that means is you will have to crank extra hard to get your fuel distributor to start delivering fuel and some of that fuel that once it is delivered it won't stay trapped in the injector lines it'll actually drain back into the return side so uh, when we lift up one of the fuel distributors the the first thing that we're looking for is this base nut and this base nut the nut should have a relatively shallow seating depth of half a millimeter. If it's one millimeter, it's really too much. It's very hard to see, but if it's even with the top, I'm not talking about almost even, because half a millimeter is pretty much the number. It's, it's, it should not be even with it, it should not be sitting at one millimeter of depth. It should be at half a millimeter. And if you have a V8 car, you see this ledge right here. We typically set the up down portion of the slotted nut with the ledge. So this, this line and these lines should be at 90 degrees from each other. Now, how do you know if you're 180 degrees out? Well, a couple of things will happen. First of all, you'll either be too shallow or too deep. Um, I, I personally think that the best measurement, the best way to measure, me, measure this is maybe with a dial gauge, although for some people that's not an option. So you may want to get a flat straight edge and cut a little tiny piece of half millimeter thick feeler gauge, which you can get anywhere and just check it. And again, you want to be around half a millimeter. Now, once you turn this in, you're going to increase the moment of delivery. In other words, 
when this thing just barely, this pin just barely starts to move, you'll get fuel delivery. And once you shut the engine off and the plate is at rest, you're gonna have some free play in the airflow meter. And you should have no fuel delivery here so you don't have any unmetered fuel going to your injectors, which is what you don't want. And um, basically your car will start up instantly because this thing, as soon as the engine sucks the airflow meter plate down, it'll just barely tap this and fuel will start to flow and boom! Instant ignition. That's why, like if you have a 560 SEL or SL that's running right and you turn the key, the key to the engine shouldn't turn for more than, you know, a couple seconds. And they say four seconds, but four seconds is kind of a long time. The engine shouldn't crank for more than a second or two, and then it instantly jumps up to 1500, 1700 RPM per second and then calms down. That's how you know that your moment of delivery is good. It doesn't struggle to run. It doesn't go. Bah, 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 bah. In fact, I find when you adjust the airflow meter just right, where you have your two to three millimeters of play, and you have a smooth idle, that's the key where it doesn't matter if it's a little high. You want that smooth idle. If you can get the smooth idle, you can get the two to three millimeters of play. You're going to get an instant start, unless your injectors are leaking down or your accumulator is bad. Now. What if this keeps adjusting itself? There's a scenario where that nut will start to back itself out again. What is this a sign of? Well, it's a sign of three potential problems. The first one is that you have multiple blocked injectors and it's causing the internal pressures in the fuel distributor to peak over seven bar. The second one is that you have a restricted um, or malfunctioning fuel pressure regulator, which is kind of an expensive part and rarely goes bad. But if you start to see that nut backing out again and you know your injectors are good, change the fuel pressure regulator. It means that when it's working full bore, it's not dumping enough pressure. The last one means it is typical of 126 cars that have sat, you could have a blocked fuel return line and these things especially like to block at the gas tank. And we had a 420 SEL that was falling apart, but the car ran really good somehow. And when we put a fuel distributor on the car, it immediately started, that nut actually turned after several cranking attempts. We ended up having to drill through some crud in the tank at the return orifice. I couldn't believe it. So I guess what I'm saying here is that there shouldn't, that thing shouldn't just move for no reason. If it does start to move, you need to diagnose the underlying cause, but there is a way to adjust it and fix it. Now, on a side note, if you rebuilt your own fuel, fuel distributor and you're getting black smoke, cars running good, but you're getting a little black smoke or rich exhaust emission when you're idling, you may have turned that nut in too far. And that's another caveat. So try to make sure when you rebuild your fuel distributors, you set the position of that nut. Um, the positioning I gave, by the way, only applies to V8 cars because that's that seems to be the majority um, KE Jetronic car that's on the road, 560 SEL, SL, 420 SEL, etc. But if you're if you're going through your fuel distributor on a 190E or a 300E and you have a four or six plunger fuel distributor, try to set it up the same way that that it came apart. Um, you know, and roughly if you have no, no free play in your fuel distributor, again, you can turn the nut inwards, just a question of how much, usually it's like 10 degrees or so, 10 to 10 to 15 degrees before you start to see that amount of clearance open up. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I don't know if it was a fun video, but it's a useful video. Enjoy trying to work on your Mercedes because a lot of people don't try and if you keep trying, you will eventually become successful. So I salute you. So please like, share, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications and enjoy working on your classic Mercedes.